In this video, we get started with Intune, what it is, and we take a walk through the portal. For a long time, I focused on Azure services that are consumption-based, not build per user. So Azure PaaS and IaaS services, not Exchange, SharePoint, or Power Apps, for example. But that has to change. Windows 365 is a significant part of the desktop as a service story. And as people move away from hybrid identities to Azure AD only, Intune is the preferred method for managing endpoints. With that in mind, let's get started with Intune. Before we do, please like and subscribe and share with a friend. Check out my courses on Windows 365, Azure Virtual Desktop, and Hybrid Identities with Windows 80 and Azure AD at udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. This is the first in a series of videos on Intune. It's been a few years since I've used Intune, and this video is intended to be a high-level introduction, also a bit of a refresher for me. The goal of this and upcoming videos is to use Intune as a replacement for legacy Active Directory domain services device and user management tools like Active Directory group policies and SCCM or Configuration Manager. Let's start with the basics. What is Intune? I used it in the past to manage end user personal iOS and Android devices. It's changed quite a bit since then and has more features and functionality. Intune is a cloud-based endpoint management solution. It manages user access and simplifies application and device management across many devices, including mobile, desktop, and virtual endpoints. It supports Android, iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, and Windows clients. Notice it doesn't support Windows servers. It supports app management. That includes app deployments, updates, and removals. We can use apps from a private store, Microsoft 365 apps, and deploy Win32 apps. We can also create app protection policies and manage access to apps and the data in those apps. We can also automate policy deployments. A policy can be for apps, device configuration, compliance policies, conditional access, and others. These policies can be assigned to users or devices. There are self-service features to reset passwords, install apps, and provide other functionality. The company portal can help reduce support calls by enabling users to take care of some basic support tasks themselves. Intune integrates with mobile threat defense services such as Microsoft Defender for Endpoints, as well as third-party solutions. And there's a web-based admin center for management. Coming up, we'll log in and take a walk through the Intune Management Center. As you'd expect, it integrates with other Microsoft services and apps. It can be used with Configuration Manager for a co-managed solution, it can also integrate with Windows Autopilot, Microsoft 365 apps, and Windows Auto Patch. Intune also integrates with third-party devices and apps. It can integrate with Google Play or Apple App Store, for example. Let's move on to an important concept for anyone getting started with Intune, device management and application management. There are two basic scenarios when dealing with devices. We have end-user-owned devices, a mobile phone, for example, and we have company-owned devices, where the company controls the entire life cycle of the device. With company-owned devices, we use Mobile Device Management, or MDM, to configure all settings on the device. We can configure Wi-Fi connections, who can sign in, and track the device, and assign security policies. With personal devices, we may not have the same level of control. For example, we may not be able to control all apps that are installed, or the type of authentication used to sign into the device. Instead, we use mobile application management to control the company apps and data on the device. For example, we can allow Outlook and Teams on a device and control authentication to those apps. We can also wipe apps and data if the user leaves the organization. In this scenario with mobile application management, we're just removing the company data and apps, not the personal data on the device. With mobile app management, we control the company applications and data on a personal device. This is sometimes called bring your own device. Next, let's look at the permissions available to use the Intune portal. First is the global administrator. This role has the rights to do everything in Azure AD, including managing all aspects of Intune. The first person to sign up for any Microsoft 365 service becomes the global admin. Because this account can do everything in Intune and other Azure AD services, access to this account should be limited. The password administrator can reset passwords for users. Service Support Administrator can open support requests with Microsoft and view the service dashboard and message center. Billing Administrators can purchase and manage subscriptions. 
User administrators can reset user passwords, add or remove user accounts, and manage service requests. They can't delete global admin accounts or create admin roles. They also can't reset passwords on other admin accounts. And finally, the Intune administrator. This account can perform all Intune administrative functions. We're going to jump into the portal and take a look at the interface next. The URL is intune.microsoft.com. Also, by default, all Intune admins require a license, even if the admin account doesn't have a device or need management. We have the option to allow unlicensed admins in Intune. This, as the name implies, will allow our administrators to manage Intune without using a license. Once you make this change, it can take up to 48 hours for the change to take effect. Let's jump into the portal and get started. Here we are in the Intune portal at intune.microsoft.com. Here's what it may look like if you log in for the first time without a license assigned to the user or without unlicensed admin access enabled. Things don't look quite right. We get some error messages. Let's enable unlicensed admin access. This allows an account to administer Endpoint Manager without an Intune license. Go to Tenant Administration, then to Roles, then Administrator Licensing. From here, select the option to allow access to unlicensed admins. This setting is not immediate. It can take up to 48 hours to take effect. If we don't want to wait for the changes to take effect, we'll need to assign the administrator an Intune license. Let's walk through the portal now that we have unlicensed admin access. The home screen has a status of the environment and some news and other links. If we had managed Windows 365 computers, we could see them here. The dashboard shows details of devices and client apps in the tenant. There's an edit button if you want to modify or add to the dashboard. Next, we'll go to All Services. You can click on a star to add or remove any of the services from the menu bar on the left. Go to Devices to manage devices in the environment. There are tabs along the top that provide details on enrollments and status. There are other view options, view devices by platform type, for example. and then Enrollment and other configuration options. Apps provides a similar view. We can see the installation status and app protection policy status. Here too, we can view by platform and configure our policies. Endpoint Security provides a place to view and manage security settings for our endpoints. This includes antivirus, disk encryption, and other settings. Reports gives us, well, reports. There's no data in this environment to report on. Users and groups allow us to view and manage Azure AD users and groups. This is convenient because we don't have to leave the Intune portal and go to the Azure AD portal for user and group management. Tenant administration gives us Intune information across the Azure AD tenant. Troubleshooting gives us the option to view information on a user. We can type in their name. And we can use the tabs for additional information. Again, this environment is empty, so there's not a lot of data here. That's a very brief tour of the portal. We'll dig deeper into features in upcoming videos. That's an overview of Intune and the Intune portal. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.